One of the cool things about digital photography is that we can take a lot of images and do something really interesting and unique with them. So what I'd like to talk about is panorama and creating panoramas from your still images. There are a couple of things that you should know in the field. You want to make sure that your content overlaps by about 20-25%. So just make sure that your images overlap a bit. You want to rotate on the same axis. So I'd like to put my finger inside the tripod socket and just rotate the camera. If you're shooting mobile, just try to be even and keep the same horizon. And to the degree that you can, hold the exposure across them. And that means just monitor the light from the same part of the image. Once you're in Photoshop, it's actually really easy. Photoshop does the work for us. We're going to come down to Automate, where all sorts of cool things are hidden away. And we're going to go to Photo Merge. And I'm going to browse here and just shift click to select my five images from my panorama. Now, this is one of those spots where I can just leave it on auto. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let Photoshop do it. I'm going to click OK. And what's going to happen is Photoshop is going to open each of these images, and it's going to align them together. And even though they might not blend together perfectly, it's going to blend them for me. And as I can see, I get a great panorama. Now, I have masks if I wanted to play around with this, but the image looks great. And that's been my experience here, is that the results are always really, really solid. I'm going to flatten this, and I want to show you something unique that you can do with your panorama using Content Aware Fill. So what I want to do here is use my magic wand tool to select this whole white area. Now, if you have areas that you need to select additionally, you can shift click to add them. In this case, it grabbed the whole thing. But what I want to do is I want to modify that selection. I want to expand it. And four, five pixels is great. All that's doing is it's edging into the image so that when I hit Content Aware Fill, I tell it, fill in this area based on what you know about that area. And so I'm just going to hit the Delete key to prompt my Fill dialog. I'm going to make sure that's on Content Aware. I'm going to click OK. And Photoshop is going to synthesize a bunch of missing information. So I'm literally adding clouds and sand and grass and all sorts of information to my image. This is a great way to fix those strangely shaped panoramas. Now let's undo that and talk about uh, some problems you might have with your image. Maybe you have little pieces you need to work through one at a time. And the workflow there is you just select small bites and again, delete and content aware fill and just work the image all the way around. It won't work in every single case, but it works more often than it doesn't. OK, so I talked earlier about how some people are skeptical of auto functionality. It really does work great with panoramas. Let me show you just how well it works. Here is a whole pile of images. And I'm in Bridge. And in Bridge, I can come up and go to Photoshop, Photo Merge. Really similar workflow as what we had before. I'm going to get the same dialog. And I'm showing you this because this is based on a mistake I made a couple years ago. I was doing this demo. I clicked OK. And I realized I loaded two sets of panoramas. And I'd made this huge mistake. And I thought, smoke's going to start pouring out of my machine. God knows what I'm going to get. And I was so amazed that Photoshop did a great job of assembling these files not into one panorama, but into two. And it did a great job of separating them out. And you'll notice that the sky is similar. These shots were taken on the same day out in Death Valley, and the results look great. So what I want to show you here is that auto works just fine for panoramas, whether you're driving it from Bridge or even Lightroom or within Photoshop itself.